What is going on guys? Um, I just want to say thank you so much for getting us to 5,000 subscribers. Uh, today is going to be a really special video, not just for YouTube, but for uh, the hobby of Pokemon card collecting. I'm, I'm really excited that this channel finally got to 5,000 subscribers, uh, but I'm even more excited to be opening up one of these heavy base set packs. I think I have eight in here. Um, Diana and Aspen have been in here with me pretty much all morning trying to figure out a cheap, effective way of doing uh, multiple uh, camera angles. This is something that I think by now I should probably know how to do, but it just goes to show that you can be a Neanderthal and a um, the least tech savvy person out there and you can still have 5,000 subscribers on YouTube opening Pokemon cards and talking Pokemon. So I think that that's pretty amazing. But rest assured that no matter what we do tonight, uh, we will be, no matter how our stream setup uh, works out, we will be opening this box, taking off the wrapper, going through the packs. Um, and I have a, I spent a couple hours yesterday watching other streams from other big name Pokemon card YouTubers and watching them open up packs from base set, all different kinds of variations, writing down the weights and figuring out what works best, what pack art gets the Charizards the most. So that's basically what I'm gonna try and replicate when I weigh out these packs. There's a good chance that there won't be a Charizard in any of these packs, even if you know we're only opening one tonight, but there's a good chance that down the road as I open all of these, there won't be in any of them. But we are guaranteed going to get a hollow foil out of the pack that we're going to open tonight. Uh, I am going to try and, you know, I haven't weighed these out yet. I mean, it's been a long time. Collecticon was the last time that I weighed these out. Um, and that was just to sell the lights so that I could afford to open up the heavies. Um, but, um, and Graded Guard was the happy buyer of all of the lighter packs. I'm pretty sure I sold it to them at a discount too. I think it was 350 per light pack, and these packs are like mint condition. Um, so I've never really made a video talking about uh, this, the story of this base set box. Um, so basically that's what we're gonna do in this video. Um, it is an appreciation video. I do appreciate you guys. I am extremely grateful. Um, and I also wanna say that um, I rarely ever ask people to subscribe or like the videos on this channel, and I did it yesterday just to get us to this 5,000 sub goal, but uh, I'm really happy that we're there, and um, so let's go ahead and get into it. So when I first got back into collecting, um, I was looking at base set booster boxes, and there was a seller that was about to sell a base set booster box. Um, I think they were looking for like 14 grand for it, and I was like, I'll give you seven, which honestly, in reality, was a super low ball, um, even though it's not out of the realm of possibilities. I mean, somebody just let me know that they got a first edition rocket booster box for like two grand. So I know that there are still incredible deals to have out there. But anyways, they said, hey, look, we really appreciate your offer, but it looks like we could get more selling these one pack at a time. And so then I let them in on the fact that if you sell them as unweighed, they might go for way less than they should, but if you sell them as weighted packs and you buy a little digital scale, you can weigh them out. And the ones that are heavy, over 21 grams, um, would be sold as light or it would be sold as heavies, or you can just list the weights on the packs and then sell them and not say if they're light or heavy, which is probably, I think, what they ended up doing. Um, but uh, they ended up auctioning off all of the packs, and I won 17 of those packs. I still remember uh, the seller name, Teddy Four Bear 5 GNX. I believe that was their seller name. Sweet old couple, uh, bought a ton of Pokemon products for their kids um, back in the day, and they ended, up, um, they ended up auctioning all the packs off. I am convinced, I swear, I'm convinced that they gave me all the heavies, knowing, knowing, I think, yeah, I, or maybe they sold them as unweighed. Yeah, I think actually, yeah, I think they sold them as unweighed. I think they sold them as unweighed, and maybe I made the argument that if they were unweighed, they might sell for more because people would gamble on whether they were heavy or light. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were sold as unweighed, and 
what ended up happening was I, this is a theory, right? Obviously, um, they may have wronged somebody else in doing this, but this is a theory that I have. I won 17 auctions, right? Almost half of a base set booster box, right? And this is the original box that they came out of, and I'll I'll finish up with that. It's gonna be a short video. It really is gonna be a short video today. Just wanted to tell you guys how much I appreciate you um, and talk about kind of the story of what we're about to get into tonight. Um, and it has been two and a half years now it's been two and a half years, maybe even longer than that, and I have sat with these packs. Uh, Collecticon, um, back a couple months ago here in Charlotte was when I sold, uh, I believe, nine of the other packs. So I won 17 auctions, but 11 of those packs were right at 21 grams. Now, I had a friend come over here. Uh, you, Some of you may know him, Pokey Pete. Uh, he's, he, he started his YouTube a couple months ago, but uh, Pokey Pete... Uh, basically told me like even if they're over 21 grams that doesn't necessarily mean they're heavy and he was right as I've been watching a lot of videos it really is the 21.5 21.4 and up 21.6 it's really those pack weights that usually have the hits 21 grams does not necessarily mean there's a there's a hit so he kind of helped me distinguish the ones that were truly heavy and of those 17 there were eight so the other nine I sold at Collecticon to Graded Power, who happily bought them at three fifty dollars a piece cash. So that was pretty cool because I got to cash out at Collecticon. Um, but now I'm left with the eight truly heavy packs. And I pray to God we didn't accidentally basically give away one of the heavy packs uh, as a light pack just because it was slightly over 21 grams. But I'm pretty confident in all the videos I watched yesterday that... The true heavy packs are inside this box now. So there's eight packs. On top of that, they gave me uh, some other little items. They gave me um, a Pokemon VHS tape that was still sealed in the plastic. They gave me some plushy stuff that was still brand new. And this is all from 1999. So it was just cool that they gave me anything free at all. Uh, they also included, which I asked, at the very least, uh, could you also maybe send me the box and the wrapper with some of the packs that I won? And they did. So I got this mint condition brand new box. This was stored in the top shelf of their garage. You can see it had a tear on it. So I was trying to get a better price on it when they were trying to sell it as the box. But it has a tear on it right here. Other than that, the box was pretty the box was pretty much in mint condition. Um so I put the I put the uh seal back onto it. I kind of slid it back on. You can see it's kind of tearing on these edges here, but I kind of slid it back on and I put those eight heavy packs back inside, kind of as a time capsule, but also because those were the truly valuable packs in this box, and I wanted to keep it just as a uh, memento and a really nice high-end vintage sealed item that I had. Today, we will open one of those eight packs that I had that are heavies, and I am going to pick the one that most closely replicates what some of the other YouTubers had opened in base set. I'm gonna try and replicate that exact same pack weight and basically narrow it down to where the Charizard could be. Now, the Venusaur and the Chansey have similar weights. They are they are very large characters on the card, so I think that there's more ink there on top of the hollow foil. whereas cards like the Raichu and the Charizard are much smaller much smaller, and the Hitmonchan are much smaller on the hollow foil. And guys, you might just throw this out and say, all right, everything is, there's gonna be so many variables, right? How much ink was used on each card, the cut of each card, the amount of plastic on the cellophane, on the, uh, on the foil wrappers, you know, the amount of uh, foil wrapper that was created. Like, these weights are gonna vary, and I'm probably not gonna be able to pin this down, but I, but I like to think that all my research wasn't for nothing. Um, anyways, I think that it's a very high chance that whatever pack I choose based on weight, it's gonna be a Hitmonchan, uh, a Raichu, or a Charizard. There's also something weird and slightly superstitious about Venusaur and Blastoise packs having more Charizards than the Charizard pack, yet, Last yesterday, uh, at the end of the day, uh, one of the last streams I watched was a TCA gaming stream, and um, he opened a Charizard heavy pack that was like 21.5 something grams, and it had a Charizard inside. So it kind of debunked that as well, um, but I'm just going to try and make the most educated guess. This is very stressful because this these, these packs... Um, 
still ran me like four to 500. I think there's a couple I got for like in the 300 area, but once there were more people bidding on it, then it got more competitive. And this was in the Pokemon boom. So everybody wanted base set heavy packs um, or base set packs in general um, that were listed as unweighed. But anyways, what I was saying when I meant like they might have screwed over the other people that were in those auctions were, I don't know how I could win most of the heavies of all those auctions. I feel like they knew I really wanted to open up these packs and get something for my YouTube channel. Uh, they've been rooting for this channel since I started it, but I think that they just were some nice old people that were just like, I want to see this kid get something cool out of these packs because... Guys, you have a one in three chance of getting a hollow out of the pack. So every one in three packs will have a hollow, right? There's 36 packs. That means 12 of the packs will have hollows. There's 16 base set hollows artworks. So you can't even really finish. Um, you can't finish a base set with one box. It usually is going to take at least two boxes to finish base set. Also, you can get duplicates. Um, and to that point, uh, I just think it's amazing that I have I have eight of the true heavies out of those 12. I mean, that's like 75% of all the good stuff out of that box. Um, so I think I got really lucky there uh, without having to do a box break or something like that. Because this is not a box break. I am genuinely opening stuff that I paid top dollar for, for our entertainment. Also, so that maybe I can relive a childhood dream that I never had, which would be to pull a Charizard. But we'll take a Venusaur or Blastoise or really anything for that matter, as long as it's not Magneton, uh, Clefairy, or uh, Polyrath. Those are the three that like I really, really don't want to get. Even the starter deck Hollows, Gyarados, Hitmonchan, Mewtwo, and Ninetales, even those aren't as bad, I feel like, as those other ones. So hopefully we'll pull something there. Hopefully it's not a Ninetales that I'm hope that I'm thinking is a Charizard. But uh, any, anything can happen here. But it's it's going to be fun. And uh, they gave me the original Wizards of the Coast um, shopping bag. There's a little plastic bag that says Wizards of the Coast on it. So like, and this was in someone's garage on a shelf for like 20 years. So this is as good as it gets in terms of like the condition of this box, leading me to believe that the condition of the packs is, is are, are really nice. Now, the, there are so many different pack variations. These are the darker colored packs. Uh, so there's a lighter colored base set pack art and there's a darker colored uh, base set pack art. These are the darker, bolder colored base set pack arts. Um, these things are so pristine. It is a tragedy to break these cards out. Like, honestly, I don't want to do this. But I promised you guys when I hit 5,000 subscribers that we would open one of these base set heavies. Also because I'm very curious what's inside these. Um, and no promises yet. De you know, depending on how this opening goes and, and, and how badly I want to gamble away on the next pack, um, we may do another opening at 7,500 subs and then do another opening at 10K subs. But none of that is confirmed. I haven't promised that yet. I just, we're going to see how this goes. Because if I can pull a Charizard on this first pack out of just doing my research, narrowing it down to all the heavies, my pick of the litter, um, there's also could be a chance... I also saw this on TCA's uh, stream yesterday at the end of the day. There's a chance that there could be two Charizards out of these eight packs. So there's a chance that even if I get Charizard, I will continue to open up these packs searching for another one or even just to complete most of base set hollow set by opening base set. I mean, how cool is that? 5,000 subs celebrating with you guys. On top of that, we are going to be opening a 151 UPC tonight to tie everything together. Even if you're not a huge fan of the vintage stuff, um, we'll still be opening 151 too, which is really hot. In my opinion, the best modern set almost ever uh, and definitely the best set of 150 of um, Scarlet and Violet era. So this is going to touch both on my love for the vintage aspect of this hobby as well as my love for the modern uh, aspect of this hobby. So it's going to be really fun. Who knows? Maybe we even get a Charizard tonight and we get a Charizard from our UPC. That would be epic. Um, or not, <laughs> or not. Maybe we get a Zapdos and we get a Zapdos in 151. There's so much that could go on here tonight. 
Um, I wish 151 had Gyarados, but oh well. Um, so much going on tonight. This is going to be epic. But we spent some time this morning trying to figure out how we were going to do the stream. And honestly, I think the best way that we would be able to do this is probably StreamYard and then upgrading and paying uh, for the account to just add another camera. Because I tried to do, I tried to do YouTube's live stream feature and I tried to do... Uh, stream together feature and what ended up happening was I had my other setup I, I went out and got another tripod setup to to have a downward facing cam and it ended up creating all of this like static and audio feedback even when we muted the other phone which makes no sense right if we mute the other phone there should be no reason if the volume's all the way down and it's muted there should be no reason that there that we're, we, we're hearing like feedback from another camera. Guys, I am not tech savvy. This is obvious and I'm amazed that my channel has even come this far, but um, we are actively going to try and figure that out. And if it ends up being at 7,500 subs, we open another base set heavy pack, then hopefully by then it'll be worth it to just pay for like a stream yard membership, whatever, and just to add another camera on there. The other, the other aspect is maybe having a desktop or using a laptop, but we, haven't figured it out. I don't think me and Diana are savvy enough or with Aspen, we have a two year old daughter. We really don't have time to be like figuring out technical stuff right now. Uh, we want to spend most of our day spending time together. Um, but we did spend some time this morning uh, and I'm only letting you guys know to know that like I tried, I put some effort in this morning to figure out what the best way to stream this would be. And, um, <clears throat> it's just, it's too much of a hassle. And honestly, I don't think it's a big deal for me to open up the pack and show you guys on camera. I'm even going to have this facing the camera and I'm slowly going to unbox everything and take the packs out. The only thing you won't see is me weighing out the packs. Um, but I can have Diana, if she's in here and available, I can have her take a photo of the, um, I can have her basically take a photo of the pack weight and then just confirm and show you guys the pack weight that we're opening to get the card that we're going to get. That way, if other people want to replicate this to pull the Charizard the, the way that I'm doing it, they can. I don't know how many people have just, have just narrowed it down to a pack weight and pulled Charizard that way, but, um... I feel like the odds when you break it down of getting a Charizard, you know, it's, 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 uh, you're one in three odds of the hollow. And then you're, you're one in 16 odds of getting Charizard. I think, yeah, it comes down to, uh, I was reading E4 about this too. Cause you know, they were talking about how many base set booster boxes are still out there. And, uh, I believe it was catch them all collectibles, but or catch catch them collectibles. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, it, I, there was a member on E4 that was like, I will give anybody, I will personally gift someone a base set booster box if they can tell how many booster boxes are still out there. Um, anyways, we they were we were talking there. I think there was maybe that was Reddit, but they were talking about probabilities, and it's one in forty eight that you're gonna pull a Charizard out of opening those packs off the first packs. Now, I think you can narrow that down as you knock other hollows out, right? Like, as if we don't get Charizard on the first or two or three packs, we can narrow it down on the last packs. I mean, what are the odds that the four heavy packs that I did not get are the ones with Charizard? That would be pretty devastating. But I can tell you guys right now that Someone, uh, a teacher that was watching my YouTube videos early on, bought from the same seller, um, which, like, I guess it's cool. I was kind of sharing that the seller had base set packs that I was buying, but I didn't realize that that was going to cause other people to auction uh, that had seen me on YouTube. Anyways, I'm thankful for that because the teacher did a video in front of their classroom and sent it to me where they opened a he one of those base set packs in front of their classroom and they got a nine tails. So they got a nine tails. She was going to grab that. Okay. They got a nine tails. So I can, I know that you can get duplicates out of these boxes, but I can at least rule out that those four packs, one of them was a nine tails. So I know based off that person reaching out to me that bought from the same seller and was so excited about what they pulled. Um, and they gave their classroom an incredible experience, which is pretty awesome. Honestly, um, I can rule out that there's three other options that could have been in those packs. Now, 
ever since then, I check up on that same seller and I ask them, has the, did anybody ever get a Charizard? And they have, to this day, responded that no one got a Charizard. So, um, unless they kept, unless they kept three of the heaviest packs or something, unless they did something and, and devised a way to basically keep the only packs that had the Charizards in them, which I don't think they did. Yeah, no, they didn't do because there were, there were 36 listings. So that's impossible. That's impossible. They couldn't have done that. So those three other packs are somewhere out there. And honestly, they're good people. They're good old people. I don't think that they were doing anything shysty or weird. Okay. So let's just, let's throw that out there. Um, but no one ever reached back out to them. And you would think someone would go back in their purchase history and say, this is who I got this pack from. I got to message them and let them know, like I pulled a Charizard, no one. And they got responses from, from another person. The same person that told me that he got the nine tails reached out to them. No one else reached out to them about what they got. So I have a hard time believing that if someone pulled a Charizard, they're not going to reach out to the seller and be like, yo, out of your pack, I pulled a Charizard. Like, which leads me to believe that the other packs that were open had duds. I believe with all of my heart that there is a Charizard in here. Probably not a PSA 10, probably a PSA 9. Based on all the videos I've watched, you are going to you are going to have a tough time getting a PSA 10 even on a freshly pulled Charizard. So, even if I pull this card, it's not going to be an epically valuable card. It'll probably be worth what a PSA 9 is worth on the market right now, which I believe is around twelve to $1,300. But that's gone up because when I bought these packs, a PSA 9 was going for 1000 to 1100 So it's funny because the longer I sit on this box, the more, the more valuable the potential pulls become, which makes it even more worth it for me to open this up. Because even if I get something else other than Charizard, other than Blastoise, other than Venusaur, whatever is in here will come close to the value of the packs. Probably not in PSA 9, but if any of them could hit PSA 10, which I do think these are cards I would want to get graded. If not, I'll put them in my base set binder and they'll just replace the crappy, the crappy played hollows that I have in there now. Anyways, video has gone on too long. I'm super excited. I'm super hype. This is going to be a wild stream. I look forward to seeing you guys later tonight, probably be around seven or eight o'clock. We'll do the stream. But I want to say, I want to say seven o'clock, guys. I want to say seven o'clock. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a fantastic day. Super excited for this stream. Anyways, peace out, everybody. I'll see you tonight.